Hi, I'm G, welcome back to my art channel, and today I'm showing you how to draw Mike Wazowski from Monsters Inc. using markers. So after drawing him out and inking him on bristle board paper, you can see me adding my first layer of colour, so my lightest tone, so the light green, the lime green brush marker. And I'm using the chisel tip to put in the base colour straight away first of all, because I can get it done quite quickly with the chisel tip chisel tip seems like quite a big tip to be doing this with but if you twist it and angle it you can actually get into some pretty small areas quite accurately with the chisel tip and if you're using that and you suddenly find you can't get at those areas you just flip the markers and you use either the brush tip or the sort of um, fine tip to fill in some of those areas where you just really would struggle to do with the chisel and then I finish off doing the very very last bits and the toes again just getting it in the base color of lime green so now I've got my base color in, I'm going to start moving up through sort of shadow colors. So I've now switched to a bright green pro marker and this is like a mid-tone. So I can start to map out where some of the shadows on this figure are going to go using bright green without it being too dark a green, but it being a step up from the lime green that I started with. So here you can see me putting in some shading and I'm actually trying to um, suggest that Mike Wazowski's body is a sort of egg or a ball shape. So therefore the shadow on it is going to curve around. And that's what you can see me trying to do with that big chunk of color there. Then I'm moving on to the arm. And again, I'm trying to put some shadow on the arm to show that the arm is slightly behind Mike Wazowski's body. So the light's not catching some of it. Then you can see me doing that eyebrow that is so important for Mike Wazowski's sort of permanently surprised looking expression with that big wide open eye. Then I move on to the hands and you can see me adding just some areas of shadow now to suggest again that part of those fingers is going to be in complete shadow for this picture and other parts are just going to have a little tinge, a little highlight left on them. And the last thing that I'm doing is I pop on some of that mid-tone on the feet, just in the sort of grooves which go in between each of those long, long toes. So the body's beginning to take shape, but I've planned on using three marker colours for most of the entire picture. And um, so I always choose a light, a medium and a dark. So here you can see me putting in what would be my dark colour, my dark shade, my dark shadow. And this is one of my favourite greens. This is forest green. And I'm adding this on and you can see really carefully, I'm deliberately not covering up all of the bright green I've already put on. So that bright green is still going to show and I'm putting the forest green over sections of it just to deepen some of that darker green shadow color like you can see on the hand here. And notice that I don't go to the very edge of the hand, especially where you can see the palm of the hand. I leave that so there's just a little bit, a little suggestion that's a bit of a reflected light hitting the edge of that hand. And again, on the legs, as I do some heavy shadow underneath his body, you can see that I leave some of those edges just a slightly lighter color. Again, suggesting that there is reflected light hitting those legs from both sides as well. So here's a little bit where I'm, I'm a bit guilty of overworking it. Um, I start to sort of really exaggerate the kind of shadow of the eye and coming around the eye. And I really should have just left that bit alone. So it stayed that lovely pale lime green. But what do you know? Now I'm looking at the mouth and I decide that the mouth and the tongue I want to have a greenish tinge to so I decide to lay down a base layer of meadow green before I start adding any of the pinks that you associate with the tongue. Now it might seem strange for me to suddenly move from doing the mouth to doing the eye and you can see me adding cool grey one here as I flick those strokes on the eye to try and give it a kind of 3D sphere type uh, quality so a shadow just on one side. But I'm trying to work mostly on this picture in layers, as you can probably tell from the green shading that I've done on Mike Wazowski's body. Um, so in order for the layering approach to work, I've got to let one layer dry before I put the second layer on. Now you can see that I'm not doing that with the eye. I'm actually putting on Cool Grey 2, while Cool Grey 1 is still wet so that the two blend together and I get a very, very smooth blended area again as you see me putting on cool gray three but that's pretty much the only area of the drawing where I actually try and blend the markers the rest of the time I'm using a layered approach here you can see me laying down the first layer of color on the eye now Mike Wazowski's eyes are sort of bluey green so I'm going in with a very light blue arctic blue to start with and then I follow that up as you can see with a turquoise brush marker 
Um, now I do got to say that I love the brush tips on any kind of brush marker pen because they allow you to do those little flicked feathered strokes that you, you know work so well on something like the eye where you've got so many layers of different color and the brush tip allows you to just flick little bits of color in there and you know do that more effectively than most of the kind of fine tips that I've ever used. And you can see me work in the usual way I do with an eye and doing those strokes like spokes of a wheel either from the outside in towards the center or vice versa. And at this point I'm doing the eye, making the eye a bit darker. I think I better put a little bit of dark shade in the mouth as well. So I've got a feel of how the mouth is beginning to take shape. Now I can start adding my third shade in the eye, which is a marine pro marker. So sticking with the blue green kind of theme, but this is not a brush tip, this is a fine tip. So I'm using this just about as carefully as I possibly can. And again, you can see me illustrating that kind of spokes of a wheel kind of idea to the way of shading an eye. So I do the outside very, very dark, the outer edge, and then I'm flicking those strokes either in towards the middle from the outside or from the middle gently outwards to the outer edge of the eye. And I'm being really, really careful again to make sure that this marine color that I'm adding does not just completely cover over the turquoise color that I put on before. I'm trying to make sure that some of that turquoise shows through so I'm gonna get lots of different colors showing through on the eye. Now I start to look at building up the tongue uh, and the pinks in the tongue and I just start with a very very pale pink, dusky pink and that's good for just completely filling in the shadow on the bottom of the tongue and then just putting in shadow on the rest of the tongue leaving that meadow green showing as a sort of really really light green highlight on Mike Wazowski's tongue. Now I'm about to finish up on the eye so I go in with my darkest colour. This is a blue green, this is petrol blue. And this is, I'm hoping that this is just going to be the very darkest last one that I have to use. So I've got to be careful how I use this. Again, I don't want to overpower the color I've already put on there. So I'm just doing those little flicked strokes from the outside in and from the inside out. And I'm trying to make sure that I just don't completely cover all of that lovely marine turquoise and even some of the really gentle bits of arctic blue that you can maybe just see here and there still showing through from that very first layer. Now with the eye looking so dark all of a sudden, I feel as though I've got to put in some comparable dark areas on the face. So I think the mouth's the best place to do this. So I start using uh, a black flex marker in there, only the flex tip wasn't so good. So you see me flip to using the chisel tip very carefully to fill the interior of his mouth completely black and really, really dark. So now you get to see me build up the pinks on the tongue using some fairly dull and muted kind of pinks. Uh, and the reason for this being that the lolly that he's gonna be licking, I decided I was gonna do that really bright, almost shocking pink if I had the markers. And so I didn't wanna do the tongue too pink pink. So I thought, well, I'll use some really kind of dark and dull shades to do it like dusky rose and antique pink, which are sort of dark and muted kind of pinks. So again, as you see me work up through the colors on this, I'm trying to stick with that idea of pretty much going with three colors for each of the things that I need to color on the whole figure. So, you know, a light, a medium, and a dark of each, whether it's pink, whether it's green, whether it's blue-green. Of course, these plans can change as you're working, as you see me put on burgundy here, so it's a really, really dark uh, color for underneath the tongue. You're probably thinking, hey, that's about his fourth color on here. So yeah, plans change. I aim for three, but sometimes it becomes four and sometimes it becomes even five. Okay, so now I'm onto the bit I was, I gotta admit, I was really looking forward to, and that's the lolly and all the droplets. So I start with a base color of sorbet um, to color this. Now I didn't have a really bright shocking pink. I had quite a lot of skin pinks, but not a lot of shocking pinks. So if anybody uses Promarkers out there and knows there's a really good shocking pink color in Promarker, please leave the title of it below in the comments so I can try and um, hook myself up with one of those. So while I let that sorbet layer dry, I then just move over and start doing the teeth. And I want the teeth to have a vanilla base coat. So they look a little bit yellowed <laughs> before I start adding any of the shadow. And I then add the same color to his horns as well and do the horns in vanilla as well, ready for later. So now I move on to doing my mid-tone on the lolly and this is rose pink and this is a flex marker so it's got a bit of a brush tip and you can see that allows me to curve some of my strokes really delicately and lightly here, um, especially on the droplets, giving the droplets that slightly curved 
feel to them. Uh, then I'm starting to do the shading on the lolly itself and I do the rose pink and I also wanted to give it these grooves, you know like those old ice lollies used to have those grooves in, in the sides. So I decided I'm going to do that. So do the middle one first and that's going to help me then plan to do the one on the left and the right and make them look as though they're spaced out correctly. I think if I'd stuck with the one on the left first and worked my way from left to right, I wouldn't have got them spaced out so well. Now here's my third and final colour for the lolly and this one, Mulberry, is a really, really lovely colour. Yeah, it's nice and dark, but it's also a sort of pinky purple magenta -y kind of dark and that was going to work really, really nicely. You can see me adding it very carefully using the finest of the fine chip tip that I can just to add a little bit of um, shading here to accentuate and exaggerate those grooves in the side of the ice lolly. And at this point, I just get out the, the Jelly Roll white gel pen just to add a couple of little sort of shiny effects to the droplets. Um, you know, I just, I can't move on without doing that. And I also see a couple of other areas where I just want to, you know, tidy up a, a dodgy looking bit of shadow line there and also a little bit of a marker that went outside of the um, iris on the eye. And there's just time to add a little bit of colour to the lolly stick itself using sunflower brush marker here before I move on to start adding some shading to the teeth. And I decide that the teeth I'm going to use a succession of warm grey colours to do the teeth. Now you saw me use cool grey on the eye, but now I'm using warm grey. Those teeth are already yellow and I want the shadows to have a little kind of a brownish tinge to them. So I just work my way up through the gears. I've started with warm grey one, then I move on to warm grey two, and now you can see me adding warm grey three. And again, I'm putting those colours on, but I'm trying to leave some of the, the colour underneath showing through. Oh, I forgot to do the nails on his fingers, so I just quickly pop those in and also use a little bit of warm grey to do the shadows on the lolly stick where the lolly is casting a bit of shadow. Then I go back to the teeth to add some more shadow onto those teeth. I'm using warm grey 4 here and uh, I'm just popping this on, especially underneath his lip where you're going to get quite a bit of shadow cast on the teeth, but also the, the teeth sort of curves over and around, so I'm putting more shadow on that left-hand side, which is of course away from the light source, which you hopefully should have guessed is coming in from the right-hand side of the picture at the moment, judging by the light um, on his eye and also the light and shade on his green body. Adding a little bit more white pen there, that you didn't miss that, did you? I had to go back in and add a little bit extra on the eye, just for those little reflection effects. And then I actually start layering up warm grey 5. So I go up to the very, very darkest warm grey on the teeth just to add that nice bit of contrast. Now for the horns on top of his head, it's the same idea. So I start with warm grey 1 to put in my shadow first of all. Then I start adding warm grey 2 and I make sure that I leave a little sliver, a little line of warm grey 1 showing through on the edge there. And you can see me putting on less warm grey 3 so that I can let the other colours show through. So it, by the time I get to warm grey 4, it's just a sliver of shadow that I'm putting in there, a thin line. And I know what you're thinking, well, it must be the same for the toes. Absolutely right. I just tackle the toes in the same way, a succession of warm grey 1, 2, 3 and 4, just to put in those shadow areas on the toes and also make them look a little bit grubby, a little bit dirty, like you kind of expect that his bare feet are. So at this point, I kind of thought that the three green colours I'd used on his body were not enough. So I needed to add a darker green yet again. So I go with a lush green, which has got a brush marker tip. And I decide I'm going to pop that in on top of the forest green. And again, try and make sure that all those colours that I've already put on, a little bit of those show. So you've got a gradual change of tone. Uh, from the lime green to the bright green to the forest green and now to this lush green. Now it looks really, really dark at the moment, but as it dries and the alcohol evaporates, it does lighten up a little bit. But I just felt like I needed that extra dark green to increase the sense of depth uh, on the whole of his figure. So now it's time to do the background and I decide that I'm going to complete my secondary colour scheme idea by doing the background orange and I use an amber pro marker and you can see me using the chisel tip quite a bit to fill in the background um, quite quickly and not very fussily. And the chisel tip gives you a sort of gently uneven quality to the background uh, without showing too many brush strokes. So I really like using it to fill in large areas of color. Now I really want to make the figure pop out from the background. So the way I'm going to do this is to give it a thicker 
black outline. So you can see me go in with a 0.8 tip fine liner here. And all I do is go around the outer edge of the entire figure. And there are a couple of places where I deliberately just go over the figure, like around the lolly. You can see I've gone around the entire edge of the lolly with the black fine liner. And I also go around his hand here. And that is just a way of making them come forwards away from the body and kidding you that there's a little bit more depth and 3D going on in the piece. And if you did your black fine lines a bit too thick, here's where the white gel pen can come to your rescue. Uh, now I'm gonna put white gel pen on the horns anyway because I want them to have a highlight. But this one on the right, I've done the fine line too thick. So the white gel pen allows me to just pick the shape of that horn back out and add that white highlight to it. Now I wanted to add white highlights anyway to the lolly because I wanted to show that it was kind of all kind of glistening and shiny. So I deliberately add white highlights quite a bit uh, on the white lolly, especially at the top where I wanted to just correct a slightly dodgy shadow that I'd done there. So I used the white um, gel pen to do that, to give me an extra bit of highlight and also kind of obliterate part of a shadow that I'd put on there that I didn't really want. Uh, then I'm just going to add a little bit on the toes, again, just to give a little bit of highlight on the actual edge of the toes. And then that's pretty much it. That's all the white highlighting that I want to do. I don't want to add too much to the figure because I don't want him to be shiny. I want certain things to be shiny. And that is Mike Wazowski completed in ProMarkers for the hashtag 6 fanarts challenge that is going on on Instagram right now. This was my sixth one. Don't forget to leave a comment and hopefully like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. And uh, if you want to see some of my other marker videos, then click the links here or down below. Thanks for watching.